Tasmania is an ancient land. At least, most of it is. The western part of it is up to 1.6 billion years old, but the east? Well, that's a completely different story. It might surprise you to learn that the two parts of the island collided together at some point during the early Devonian period, roughly 400 million years ago. We're going to do a deep dive into the details of the collision in this video, but first some context. I've made videos on Tasmania's geological origin and on the origin of Flinders Island. I'll include a link to all the videos in the description. Firstly, Western Tasmania and King Island contain rocks that can be dated and traced back as far as 1.6 billion years ago. It was created from sediments shed from southwest North America and East Antarctica. Rocks that exist in the Grand Canyon in America are geochemically linked to some of the rocks in Tasmania. Sediments from an ancient mountain range that stretched from west to east in North America were shed into a deep ocean after an event known as the Grenville Orogeny uplifted the land to form major mountain ranges. A rift event then occurred and Tasmania, which was originally positioned in the Northern Hemisphere, became uplifted from the seas and separated. Part of it was left in North America, and there would undoubtedly be parts of it in East Antarctica that remain hidden beneath the ice. The rift occurred 750 to 600 million years ago, and Tasmania drifted for around 150 million years as a lone microcontinent known as Van Dyland, before inevitably colliding with Western Victoria, where it sutured to the landmass around the Bacchus Marsh area, beginning around 500 million years ago. At this point in time, Tasmania looked like this. King Island existed, and Western Tasmania did too. Flinders Island and the eastern section of Tasmania, however, wouldn't exist as a subaerial landmass until the Devonian period, when the Lachlan Origin took place. The Lachlan Origin refers to a series of geological events that shaped much of eastern Australia, including eastern Tasmania. These events occurred over a prolonged period during the Paleozoic Era, primarily spanning from the Ordovician to the Devonian periods approximately 480 to 360 million years ago. Before we go further, it's worth visiting the videos that I released on Flinders Island. In it, I documented how the island came into existence. Eastern Tasmania is closely related to the processes that uplifted Flinders Island, and the video is definitely worth watching to get a greater understanding of the processes that occurred. Eastern Tasmania and Flinders Island share the same batholithic granite intrusions. These now solidified enormous ancient magma chambers were emplaced into the crust at the same time. Flinders Island is known for a gemstone known as the Killicranky Diamond. Contrary to the name, the gemstone is actually a brilliant topaz that looks very similar to a diamond. It's so similar in appearance that early gemologists in the 1800s had trouble understanding the difference between the two and it was only with advancements in technology that we were able to work out that it was a topaz and not a diamond. The reason I'm mentioning this gemstone is because it likely exists beyond the shores of Flinders Island. The very same granite that shed this gemstone on Flinders Island exists in eastern Tasmania, and thus the Killicranky Diamond likely exists on the mainland much like it occurs on Flinders Island. So let's take a look into where the collision occurred in Tasmania and what forces drove it. To understand this, we need to look into the Tamar Fault Zone. It's a major fault system in Tasmania that separated two continental plates. It's also known as the Tamar Fracture System. The Tamar Fault Zone is the boundary between these two continental plates, similar to the San Andreas Fault System in North America. The Tamar Fault Zone also corresponds to the Victorian Governor Fault. This is the same fault that I outlined in my video on Flinders Island, showing the connection between Tasmania, Flinders Island and Victoria. It's worth remembering that at this point in time, Australia was joined to Antarctica and was known as Gondwana, a supercontinent that includes Australia, Antarctica, India, Africa and the Americas to name a few. And Australia and Antarctica wouldn't fully break apart until 80 million years ago, with the rift event beginning some 160 million years ago. So we have West Tasmania, Australia and Antarctica sandwiched together 400 million years ago. Now I mentioned that the collision that occurred was a continent to continent one. This means East Tasmania was likely a lone microcontinent or a series of smaller terrains before it sutured with Western Tasmania. Eastern Tasmania's origin is tied to subduction and accretion processes along the Gondwanan margin. It likely formed as a fragment of the Lachlan origin, which included volcanic arcs, back arc basins and accreted sediments. 
So the subduction events that occurred during the events that made up the Lachlan Origin are likely responsible for birthing the eastern portion of Tasmania. This suture zone reflects the closure of the intervening ocean or Backarc Basin, consistent with microcontinent or terrain collision dynamics. The east was geologically distinct from western Tasmania until their collision during the Tabarabra Orogeny in the Devonian. I mentioned the Tabarabra Orogeny in depth as it relates to Flinders Island in the video I made on that, and here's what I said. The Tabarabra Orogeny, occurring during the Middle Devonian around 385 to 380 million years ago, was a brief yet intense tectonic event that reshaped southeastern Australia, affecting regions in Victoria, New South Wales, and Tasmania. Driven by tectonic compression along the eastern edge of Gondwana, this orogeny caused widespread folding, faulting, uplift and crustal thickening. The compression generated enough heat to partially melt the crust, resulting in significant granite intrusions that are visible today due to later uplift and erosion. This event marked a major transition, ending marine sedimentation and uplifting previously submerged regions above sea level, subjecting them to erosion and forming rugged landscapes. And it's likely that along with being uplifted from the deep sea, Flinders Island's first glimpse at subaerial life involved the development of a mountain range, or at the very least an elevated terrain that has completely eroded today, unveiling the once deep granitic bathliffs, which were previously vast deep magma chambers that never made it to the surface to erupt, and instead cooled and solidified, only to be later uplifted. This orogeny was a major mountain building event that occurred during the Devonian period around 390 to 380 million years ago. This process involved oceanic crust being consumed beneath the continental crust, which built volcanic arcs, accretionary wedges, and other features typical of subduction zones. Over time, as the oceanic basin between East Tasmania, or the associated terrains, and the West Tasmanian landmass narrowed, continental collision occurred during the later stages of the orogeny. This was when the terrains and microcontinental fragments were sutured to the Gondwanan margin, marking the final stages of the orogenic event. Subduction zones and tectonic compression played a central role, closing ocean basins and deforming the crust. So how do we know the east and west are separate entities? Well, there's a few reasons. One of the major indicators are the contrasting geology that exists between the east and west. West Tasmania is dominated by ancient Precambrian rocks that are 1.6 billion years old at their oldest, while East Tasmania consists of Paleozoic sedimentary and volcanic rocks associated with the Lachlan origin that are dated to being deposited within the past 538.8 million years. Another indicator is the deformation and metamorphism patterns that are consistent with continental collision and crustal thickening. And lastly, the Tamar Fracture Zone is a clear geological boundary running through central Tasmania that very noticeably marks the suture between the older West Tasmanian block and the younger East Tasmanian terrains. The collision caused crustal thickening, regional metamorphism, and the intrusion of granitic magmas into the crust. As you can see, there are many granitic intrusions that exist in the east, and the emplacement of them all occurred around the same time, including the granite that exists on Flinders Island. So whilst East Tasmania and Flinders Island are separated by a body of water, it was only recently that the inundation of this area occurred. The Tamar Valley occupies the Tamar Graben, a geological structure defined by a series of parallel northwest trending faults. A graben forms when the Earth's crust is subjected to extensional forces. The Tamar Fracture Zone was affected by the rifting event, and for a good reason. After all, it's plausible that the Tamar Graben and the associated stretching forces align with the suture zone between East and West Tasmania, which is a major weak point in the crust. The resulting narrow trough, some 50 kilometers long and 5 kilometers wide, has been partially infilled with soft sands, clays and gravels with intercalated basalt flows in places, of mainly a Paleogene, lower tertiary age of 66 million years ago to 23 million years ago. Low hills of hard Jurassic dolerite deposited between 201.3 to 145 million years ago define a structure on either side. The Graben was formed during the breakup of Gondwana, during the separation of Australia from Antarctica in the Cretaceous Early Cenozoic period, some 70 to 140 million years ago. However, the breakup forces were not specifically trying to pull East and West Tasmania apart. Instead, the forces acted on Tasmania as a whole exploiting pre-existing structural weaknesses like the Tamar Fracture Zone. With that being said, it's very possible that the two could have been pulled apart if the force was great enough, but thankfully it wasn't, 
and it is known as a failed rift. Instead, the crust cracked and sagged as it was torn apart, opening up the land to form a valley that we call the Tamar Valley today. So this is the story of the collision between East and West Tasmania. It occurred around 400 million years ago. It was driven by the subduction events that make up the Lachlan origin. The eastern part of Tasmania was likely a lone microcontinent or a series of terrains that were created during the earliest subduction events that the Lachlan origin is comprised of. Volcanic arcs, back arc basins and accretionary wedges formed along the margin of the ancient supercontinent Gondwana, contributing to the development of these terrains. Over time, these smaller landmasses were pushed towards western Tasmania due to tectonic forces. This culminated in a continental collision around 390 million years ago during the Devonian period as part of the Tabarabra orogeny. During this collision, the Tamar fracture zone formed, marking the suture where east and west Tasmania were welded together. The collision caused significant deformation, including folding, faulting and metamorphism of the rocks in the region. Granitic intrusions associated with this event further solidified the union between the two regions. Thus, East and West Tasmania became a single landmass, though their contrasting geological histories remain evident. The West is dominated by ancient Precambrian rocks, while the East showcases younger Paleozoic formations, highlighting their different origins and the dramatic tectonic forces that brought them together. I hope you found this to be as interesting as I did, and as always, thanks for watching. Before I end this video, I'd like to give a big shout out to my Patreon and YouTube members. Thank you so much to everyone that helps to support this channel.